Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Today we ask, did Kamina Drummer do the right thing back in season four when she let Marco and Aros go free? But first, I just want to point out that The Expanse's writing is still really smart. I'm really glad that they included this little scene right here. Do you feel any remorse for what you've done? Why would I? This is what I would call plot housekeeping. Things were getting a bit too mushy between Naomi and some of Marco's crew, especially her son. I found myself saying, um, they just killed millions of people. That must still be on your mind, Naomi, right? It hindered my ability to suspend disbelief a bit that she was mingling with old friends and kin in an amiable way as if they aren't mass murderers. So good on the writers for cleaning this up a bit by having Naomi confront Philip about his conscience. By the way, I do want to find some time soon to put together a Naomi character breakdown. I've had an angle in my head for a while, I just have been delaying it. So if you want the video, let me know in the comments below because that will help motivate me to sit down and do it. Certainly the actress who portrays Naomi deserves to have her character honored on this channel. I think that she's done a tremendous acting job so far. Anyway, on to today's affairs. You'll remember that back at the beginning of Season 4, following the events that led to the awakening of the Ringgate system, the mainstream factions of the Belt were attempting to accede to intrasystem norms with the hopes of being recognized as a serious player among the big boy superpowers of the Soul System and thus elevate the status of the Belt and the quality of life for its people. Of course, part of acceding to intrasystem norms involves obeying the laws of war and cooperating with Mars and Earth. This means the Belt had to clean up some of its more violent and fanatical factions, including Marco Inaros and his followers. Two leaders of the Belt's ascension to recognized statehood were Kamina Drummer and the Honorable Pirate Kleis Ashford, blessed be his name. Well, seeing that Marco Inaros was acting counterproductive to their ambitions for the Belt, namely by breaking the peace with the Inners, they had the rogue OPA operative tracked down and apprehended. The major factions of the OPA then voted on whether to execute him or let him go and ultimately representatives of two factions voted to spare him, while representatives of the other two, one being Ashford, voted for death. Kamina was the tie-breaking vote and voted to let him go. She later explained to Ashford why she didn't vote to execute Inaros. Golden Bow and Black Sky already feared their position will decline once the blockade is lifted and Medina becomes fully operational. She wanted to space the guy, but feared the repercussions to come had she voted for death. She felt that the two factions that voted in Inaros' favor were feeling insecure given the rise to prominence of Medina Station, the converted colony ship space station over which she and Ashford reigned. As she said to Ashford, she believed that undermining them at such a sensitive time could lead to civil war. If we handed out a death sentence against their votes, we would have been asking for a civil war. Ugh. I did what had to be done. Now, let me be clear. Given how subsequent events have unfolded, it's not easy to argue that Kamina made a good decision here, if by good we mean in accordance with Kamina's own goals for the belt, which I would posit are for it to rise in peace with the Inners. I mean, Inaros went on to kill millions of people on Earth and Mars. He may have just made peace with the Inners impossible. Setting the goal even more broad, we might attempt to argue that if the desired outcome is to preserve as much life across the system as possible, then allowing Inaros to live has definitely not proven to be the wisest choice. Additionally, prior to dropping massive flaming rocks onto Earth's surface, Inaros killed Ashford. And while that's only one person, he was a significant person, and the loss of his leadership is probably a negative for the belt. And of course, Ashford was also a fan favorite, and so I know that many of you are bitter about Kamina's decision simply because you miss the best space pirate ever. So anyway, what makes the question we're asking in this video difficult is that there's no way to tell what would have happened had Inaros not been spared. However, I think the most logical course of action here would be to assume that in the short term, it's very unlikely that a violent act to the extent that Inaros carried out would have happened. And the OPA would still be in good position to continue its rise to power player status. That said, during Inaro's ad hoc trial, which by the way, um, belt, if you want to be taken seriously, I might suggest due process. But anyway, during said trial, Kamina could only act based on the information she had at that moment. And considering that fact, I can kind of see why she made the decision that she did. Kamina knew that Inaros is dangerous. She may not have thought that he's capable of something as catastrophic as the asteroid attack, but she knew he was going to strike again if they let him go. She simply felt it was the better option to do so. We humans kind of get stuck in this mindset that if we end up with an undesirable outcome due to a certain policy or decision, then the opposite policy or decision would have resulted in a positive or better outcome. But this just isn't necessarily true. Remember, there's almost never only two possible decisions. 
We just boil down certain problems to having two or maybe three solutions because our human minds can only process so much at once. And achieving the best possible outcome requires the curation of infinite variables related to decisions affecting the outcome. In other words, it's probably impossible to actually achieve the best possible outcome. And it's definitely impossible to know we've achieved the best possible outcome after the fact, given our lack of, well, a time machine. There's actually a lot of different things that the OPA could have done with Marco. There's different times they could have let him go or killed him, different people they could have had execute him, different places they could have released him to, different ways they could have kept an eye on him, different conditions they could have stipulated as prerequisites for his release, and so on. So what I'm getting at here is that I think it's possible that the OPA could have still let Marco and Aros go, but done so in a different way than they did and thus received a better outcome than they did. And on the other hand, it's perfectly reasonable to believe that executing Inaros would have been a poor decision. One truth that humans both en masse and on an individual level time and time again fail to understand and apply to life is, well, Obi-Wan, take it from here. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Oppressing your enemies only makes their cause stronger over time because such action gives their claims of grievance a basis from which to gain support and galvanize their followers. You could try to wipe out your enemies completely, but even that stands the chance of leading to more and greater enemies. Such as the law of motion and the way of the world and yada yada yada, but I don't want to get too lost in this point right now. What's relevant to us is that had Kamina chosen to execute Inaros, his death might very well have led to more insurrection in the belt. As belters are still not quite on equal ground with Mars and Earth, their society is primed to produce martyrs. Kamina foresaw that given her position in belter affairs, killing Marco would stir suffering belters around the soul system to suspicion and apoplexy. In their perspective, with a little bit of propagandizing for assistance, here's this elite belter, comfortable aboard the lavish Medina station, cavorting with inners, and now she's killed this OPA hero who was committed to the lowly belter slaving away in the mines. Uh, not a great look. And the lacuna in the belt's skeletal makeup left by Anaros' demise would have opened the door for another megalomaniac to rise in his stead. Decapitation of terrorist leaders in the real world off does little to curb the activities of the leader's faction. Opportunity attracts opportunists, right? To solve problems, you have to address their underlying issues. But as far as the short term goes, killing Marco doesn't appear to be a better decision than the one Kamina made. Given the same information as she had at the time, I probably wouldn't have voted for death either. And that's not to say that one can never fight off his enemy. Sometimes violence is necessitated. And Inaros does seem to have a way with words so as long as he lives, he's a threat. However, in this particular instance, murdering Inaros would have been unlikely to advance the belt towards unity and prosperity. At least, I think it wouldn't be. Where I think Kamina's real mistake lies is in her failure to keep an eye on him after releasing him. Thus, we arrive at one of the variables in need of nuanced curation. This is a tricky problem to solve as well, though, because imprisoning Inaros might still have been enough to rouse his followers in the belt to violence against Medina Station and its allies. Still, to think that Inaros would have been able to evade Kamina's eye long enough to launch a devastating attack on Earth is pretty baffling given his prior actions. In other words, I don't really think Kamina had a good decision at her disposal during Inaros' trial, but the neglect she displayed following her decision to set him free is where she went awry. But anyways, I don't need to examine every single angle here. I have you for that. Um, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of the decision to let Marco and Aros go and how you would have solved for that. Um, subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell for now. My name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.